Hello and welcome. This week I will be visiting my own home park, California's Great America. Before we start the main show, I wanted to bore you for a couple of minutes with the history of the park in order to show you why this park has become a failure and has a permanent closing date in 2033. In 1976, Marriott's Great America opened to celebrate the nation's bicentennial. They also opened a sister park in Gurney, Illinois, that's known today as Six Flags Great America. In 1977, Great America debuted the world's tallest roller coaster called Tidal Wave. That ride closed in 2016, so it will not be in this video. Sorry. In 1979, Great America unveils a 200-foot sky tower, which is still the tallest observation deck in Northern California. And guys, it's in horrible shape these days. You'll see why. 1980, the Demon opens up, which is a steel roller coaster with two 360-degree loops and a twisting double corkscrew. Now, this ride used to give me an absolute headache as a kid because my head would rattle around between the shoulder rests like a pinball machine. Thankfully, my head is taller than the shoulder rests today. In 1985, the city of Santa Clara purchased Great America from Marriott and recruits King's Entertainment to manage the park. Now, in 1989, King's Entertainment exercises its option to buy Great America's business assets and enters into a 50-year land lease with Santa Clara. 1991, the only stand-up roller coaster in NorCal, Vortex, opens. This ride eventually retired in 2017 to become the park's first floorless roller coaster. In 1992, Great America is acquired by Paramount Communications, becoming known as Paramount Great America. Now, this is the name that I knew it as growing up, Paramount Great America. This was supposed to set a new direction for the melding of movies and television with theme park attractions. Thank Universal Studios. In 1993, the park's first movie theme attraction opens, Top Gun. A 102-foot tall suspension roller coaster completed with inversions and bank turns delivers an adventure similar to the aerial acrobatics featured in the hit movie. 1996, the park celebrates its 20th anniversary season with the unveiling of Drop Zone Stunt Tower. At 224 feet, one of the tallest and most intense freefall rides in the world. And don't go on this ride after you've just eaten. The world's tallest free fall ride. You don't have to be crazy to ride it. Thank you, sir. May I have another? But it helps. Only at Paramount's Great America. Now we're going to fast forward to 2006. Cedar Fair acquires all Paramount parks from CBS Corporation. This increased Cedar Fair's operation to 12 amusement parks. And thus, Great America becomes the red-headed stepchild setting up for an ultimate demise. In 2008, Great America's name is transformed to California's Great America. I'm not really sure why it took them two years to rename it. Boring things happen between 2008 and 2012. Now, in 2012, Levi Stadium begins a two-year construction in Santa Clara. Why is that relevant? Because Levi Stadium and Great America share a parking lot. And it's a nightmare if you're trying to go to the park while there's a game on. Blah, blah, blah. Even more boring things happen between 2014 and 2018. In 2019, Cedar Fair completes the purchase of the land that Great America sits on for $150 million. 2020, we all know what happened this year. This caused a year-long closure for the park, which caused it to be buried in debt and made Cedar Fair hate it even more. In 2022, Cedar Fair sells the land that Great America sits on to Prologus, a Bay Area logistics real estate company. Prologus agreed to lease the land to Cedar Fair for 11 years, meaning that the park would officially close its doors in 2033. I don't think anyone is going to be surprised if they build apartments or business buildings in this spot. As of July 1st, 2024, a merger between Cedar Fair and Six Flags was completed, creating Six Flags Entertainment Corporation. It remains unclear how the merger will impact the scheduled closure of Great America. And now on with the show and possibly my last time ever going to Great America. I haven't been to this park in over 10 years, mostly because I've been living out of state. I was a little excited to see what was still around and what changes have been made. I did upgrade to the fast lane pass because I knew it was going to be a busy day. told you the waiting time for the normal line and the fast lane line.
have my morning coffee and that ride just jostled my brain around, so I'm away.
The Disney Off World used to be a hassle involving you. You can arrive at the off-world vacation destinations from Fantastic Park, Focus, and Logical Change. As soon as we sat down, they told us they were having technical difficulties and ushered us out. Now I'll never know who these characters are. Great America is not a very good amusement park. It's run by teens and college kids who aren't paid enough to care. The lack of cleanliness leaves a film of stickiness wherever you touch. The lack of creativity leaves little to the imagination. I don't think the failure of Great America is due to its lack of value or potential, but more of the byproduct of the many changes of ownership, each having no sense of direction for the park. This park deserved a much better fate and I'll be sad to see it go.